So uh, as you heard Art talk about in his keynote, uh, about a month ago we signed an agreement to acquire Coverity that enters for us the uh, software quality analysis and measurement market. You can see this is a large market. It's about $500 million today, according to IDC, and growing pretty rapidly, about 20% a year. The good news is that with this announcement, we enter this market as the leader. So why is this market growing so rapidly? Well, I think it's obvious to everyone that the role of software in the world is just dramatically exploding. We see in, the, in our traditional customer base and the, among the companies that are here at Snug, many, many companies are hiring more software engineers than hardware engineers today. And then you look outside of the companies that are attending Snug today, and many, many industries are basically based on software. Their main differentiation is on software. They are essentially software companies, whether they're energy companies or retail companies or telecommunications companies or oil and gas companies. It's all built on a software infrastructure. And uh, if you think about software, it hasn't, we haven't really changed how we've developed software very much over the last 20 years. Software is still developed more or less like cars were developed 100 years ago here. We write the software, we get in it, we drive it along, and we wait for a wheel to fall off. And when that happens, we figure out why the wheel fell off, slap it back on, get back in the car, go a little bit further down the road, figure out why that wheel came off, et cetera, et cetera. So this is great, but it's really not going to work going forward. And uh, you see all the time the cost of software defects exploding. As a matter of fact, you would, it, this is probably one of the major items in the nightly news. Now, it's always been a problem. All the way back in 1962, software was destroying spacecrafts, uh, but th back then it was probably a yearly occurrence. Now you can't turn on the TV without learning about some major corporation that's been embarrassed or practically destroyed or lost 10% of their revenue or lost a bunch of their market cap or lost $500 million in, uh, in just a few minutes because of some defect in software. So it's hard to say exactly how much this is really costing the world. There have been a couple of attempts. Back in 2002, the National Institutes of Standards uh, estimated that software defects were costing the U.S. economy about $60 billion at that time. More recently, Cambridge University in 2011 came out with a study, 2012, uh, saying that software defects cost the world economy something over $300 billion. So the scary part isn't so much what happens now, the $300 billion that we're spending on software defects now, but it's really what happens five and ten years from now if this problem doesn't get solved. You know, right now, software is, uh, I think we're ending the era of sort of flat software. You know, I've talked to customers in the last month that have 500 million lines of software. But mostly, it's just sitting there and one piece of it is executing at a time. Now we're entering an era where we're going to have software in our cars, interacting with navigation systems, driving our cars for us, or at least assisting us, getting much, much more complicated, much, much more interactive. And we just can't afford to continue forward and end up spending trillions of dollars of the world uh, in the world working on software defects. So what can we do about this? Well, I think it's time to you know, put some real, uh, real engineering power behind this. Uh, you saw this slide that Art talked about this morning. This was essentially the what-if slide that launched Synopsys. And the idea here was, you know, what if a developer can come up with a high-level design description run it through some secret technology X and come out with a correct schematic? Wouldn't that be wonderful? And that's really very much the innovation that launched the digital revolution. I mean, there were many, but without logic synthesis, we would not have the computers and the mobile technology, et cetera, that we have today um, that, we, that is essentially driving everything. So in software, you know, is it possible to do something similar? What if there was a software developer, and instead of coming up with a concept for a chip, he was writing software, he was writing C code, and I'm sure most of you have already uh, discern the bug in that code there. That's a little piece of bad code. Unfortunately, the bug in there is one that is going to be intermittent and very hard to find because it's not going to act the same way every time you find it. Uh, what if, uh, but it's an easy bug to add. We all do it all the time. In all my coding every day, I do the same thing. Um, so what if you were able to come up with a technology Y 
that would go in and identify, without running and waiting for the wheel to fall off, identifying exactly what's wrong with that code, going back and telling the developer, maybe even eventually fixing it uh, for him, and uh, allowing you to spit out good code right after that. Um, well, that would be pretty important, and that's, it, that's exactly what Coverity does. Coverity 